Let's talk about Halloween. Are you eating my favorite candy? Maybe. Are you share it with me? No. I see how it is. You better see how it is. I will say that I'm pretty excited about Halloween this year. You're excited? Yeah, I don't know. I'm just feeling the vibes this year. You know the vibes? Yeah, I, I know the vibes, but let's see if you're actually a fan after the episode. All right, that's fair enough. We celebrate Halloween every year on October 31st. Happens to be my favorite holiday. Yeah, I know. I know. I guess the question I have though is why do we celebrate it every single year? Like why do we dress up and ask strangers for candy? Yeah, that does kind of go against the whole stranger danger concept. Yeah, it's the one night of the year where that doesn't apply. Yeah, but we do have to get our candy though, right? You know you're 29, right? Yeah, and? All right, let's just go for it. Halloween's origins date back to the ancient Celtic festival of Samhain. 2,000 years ago, Ireland, the UK, and Northern France celebrated their new year on November 1st. This day marks the end of summer, but also a time associated with human death. Celts believe that on the night before the new year, the boundary between the world of the living and the dead became blurred. On October 31st, the Celts celebrated Samhain. It's believed that this was the night ghosts returned to Earth. It was also believed that the ghosts would cause trouble and damage the crops. Because they depend on the natural world, they're worried about crop damages, especially during the winter time. They also thought that the presence of spirits made it easier for priests to make predictions about the future. So they celebrated this time of year by building huge bonfires. To keep the spirits from causing trouble, they burned crops and animals as sacrifices. This is also when costumes start to be worn, usually animal heads or skins. That would upset me so much to wear an animal head. I can't even wear a plastic Halloween mask. Oh, I couldn't agree more with you, but luckily we don't have to wear it anymore, so that's a good thing. So when the celebration was over, they used the bonfire to relight their fires at home. They did this because they thought it would help protect them for the coming winter. When the Roman Empire conquered the Celtic territory, two festivals of Roman origin were combined into Samhain. The first one was Fralia, and this was a day in late October when they celebrated the dead. And the second was a day to honor Pomona, the Roman goddess of fruit and trees. The symbol of Pomona is an apple, which is probably the origin of bobbing for apples. Have you ever bobbed for apples? Yeah, I haven't done it for a while though, and I'd probably honestly drown myself. It's actually a pretty disgusting thing to do. You don't like absorbing all those germs into your face? By the 9th century, the Christian religion had spread into Celtic lands. It was blended with some older Celtic traditions and eventually replaced them. In 1000 AD, the church made November 2nd All Souls Day to honor the dead. Today, it was believed that it was an attempt to replace the Celtic festival with a church-sanctioned holiday. All Souls Day was similar to Samhain with bonfires and parades. They also dressed up in costumes as saints, angels, and devils and the celebration was also called All Hallows Eve. Eventually, it was called Halloween, but it was extremely limited to colonial New England. Halloween was much more common in Maryland and the Southern colonies. The holiday spread later when European customs and beliefs blended with American Indians. During the first celebrations, people told stories of the dead, told each other's fortunes, danced, and sang. By the mid 19th century, Halloween was still not celebrated everywhere in the country. But in the second half of the 19th century, a lot of new immigrants were coming to America. These new immigrants were part of the reason Halloween became so popular nationally. Americans began to dress up in costumes, go house to house, and ask for food and money. Okay, do you think it's frowned upon to ask for money? Because that sounds more fun and Halloween costumes are super expensive. You know, I would definitely advise you not to ask for money, but that's just my opinion. But Halloween costumes are super expensive. Then that's why you ask for money. By the 20s and 30s, Halloween had become more of a community-centered holiday. Pranks and tricks, as well as vandalism, became a problem around this time. By the 50s, Halloween became a holiday directed mainly at younger people. Because of the baby boom, parties moved from town civic centers into classrooms and homes. Between 1920 and 1950, the centuries-old practice of trick-or-treating was also revived. Trick-or-treating was a relatively inexpensive way for the entire community to share the Halloween celebration. Families thought by giving children small treats that might stop tricks from being played on them. Hence, trick-or-treating. <laughs> So, there's still a lot of interesting Halloween traditions worldwide today. In North American cities, there's something called Mischief Night, also known as Devil's Night, Cabbage Night, Trick Night, Hell Night, or Goosey Night. This takes place the night before Halloween in New England, South Dakota, Detroit, and other parts of North America. On this night, people will steal rotten fruit from local farms and throw it at people, and sometimes set fires to cars and buildings. Yeah, that escalated really quick. Yeah, setting fires to things is not what I consider a trick. No, but they also ding-dong ditched and teepeed houses all night. That's more like it. Yeah, and by the way, I was the king of that. I killed it back in the day. 
Anyways, in Detroit, because of the violence, a group called Angels Night patrolled the streets. In 1995, the city created Angels Night. Neighborhood volunteers would help prevent fires from spreading around the city. The group of volunteers operated much like a neighborhood watch. It's great to see how kind of the community come together and help each other out. I couldn't agree more. In the UK, the original jack-o'-lanterns were carved from turnips and beets. Aha! The story of Stingy Jack. I know this one. And the kids used to carry them while trick-or-treating, and in some areas, they still place them outside to protect them from spirits. That's cool. I prefer pumpkins, though. Me too. Have you ever seen a carved turnip? Scariest thing I've ever seen in my life. Oh yeah. No, I couldn't agree more. But I guess it's good, though, you know, trying to scare away the ghosts and all that. There's also a tradition of barmbrack in Ireland. This involves a fruitcake with cloth wrapped treats inside. It's said to be able to predict the future of the person who eats it. If the cloth contains a ring, it means romance is in the cards. And a coin indicates wealth is on the way, but a thimble means you're doomed to never marry. There are a lot of traditions about marriage and finding a husband or a wife. I know. Here's another one. In Scotland, it's tradition to peel an apple in one long strip and throw it behind your back. The shape it lands in is supposed to spell the first letter of your future spouse's name. I want to try that, but I fear that it would never land in the shape of a K. Yeah, let's not press our luck on that one. <laughs> well, I'll still marry you, okay? Thanks, I guess. <laughs> and my personal favorite, Germans will put away or hide knives before bed so the spirits don't hurt themselves. I feel like I would be more afraid of the spirit hurting me with the knife. Um, same. So, that's just some of the weird traditions around the world, but there are a ton more. The celebration of Halloween has come a long way in 2000 years. But it's still one of the most celebrated holidays next to Christmas. And I love it very much. Can we please carve pumpkins this year? Anything for you, spooky girl. So thank you guys so much for watching. We hope you liked this video, and if so, please subscribe to our channel. As always, we challenge you to get out there and ask more questions. And remember, always stay curious.